In this video, we'll be learning about how to talk to a YouTube video's transcription using the ChatGPT API, the GPT 3.5 Turbo, using LangChain. Let's start with a quick demonstration. So everything is loaded. Now we can ask questions about this YouTube video, which is a YouTube video reinforcement learning course from MIT from 11 months ago. I will ask, what is reinforcement learning? And it answers, reinforcement learning is a type of machine learning, and then it goes on. I will ask what are some RL methods. RL stands for reinforcement learning. And it answers that the lecture mentions two main classes of RL algorithms, value learning algorithms and policy learning algorithms. This also comes with a chat history, although I wasn't able to get it working right. But anyway, let's start talking about the code. Let's review it and see how we can build something like this. As I mentioned, the video we'll be using is the MIT's lecture on reinforcement learning. We will be using LangChain as a library to interact with the large language model from OpenAI, OpenAI's API. LangChain provides many great solutions in modular format, so you can actually use OpenAI's API with much ease and with, with less code. We are also going to be using Chroma for our vector store, our indexing of the embeddings. So let's just begin with the overview of the code. Requirements for this project is LangChain, OpenAI, ChromaDB, YouTube-Transcript-API, and PyTube. You will have to pip install these into your environment, virtual environment. You want to use a virtual environment. And then you need to set the environment variables for OpenAI open API key. I have already set it in my user environment variables, so you can define it in the code. Then next, we need to load the transcript from YouTube, which is what we're doing right here, because we have imported our necessary imports from LangChain. So YouTube loader to load the YouTube video's transcription. OpenAI embeddings to turn the transcript into a vector store. Chroma to be able to help do that. Recursive character splitter so we can divide our text into chunks. Chat vector DB chain to be able to use the chat GPT API, GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we are importing the OS to be able to do some directory and file stuff with the system. So our loader will load our YouTube video. However, I found out that if your YouTube video is too short, that you might get an error from ChromaDB for requesting more elements than exist from the index. Make sure that your YouTube video is long, probably five minutes or more. You probably don't want to do a search and talk over a YouTube video, which is short anyway. Another thing I noticed is that ChromaDB was getting error messages with the YouTube's metadata, especially the published date. So I wanted to handle that here. Just wanted to mention this to you. So we are just, we are defining our loader here with the YouTube loader with the URL. Then we are loading the transcription into our documents. And then we will print the documents and then we will print the page content. And we will be deleting from the metadata the published date because Chroma DB doesn't like it and it seems to be incompatible with this type of format. I have changed this line to print the metadata to illustrate the problem to you. I'm just going to put a breakpoint here and run it with the debugger right here, run and debug or F5. And our code will stop and pause right when it reaches line 19. So we can do step-by-step -step execution. So now we are there. When we go one more, we see that we have our metadata. The problem that ChromaDB was having was with the published date, this one. It just didn't like this format. So that's why I'm actually deleting it with this line right here. But if we were to go ahead and print the document's first elements page content, then we see that this is the content that we're really looking for. I just wanted to demonstrate this to you. After that, we are defining our text splitter. We are using the recursive character splitter with 1000 character size, chunk overlap 20, so that each chunk will have 20 of the other chunks elements added to it. You can set this to zero if you like. This is how we define a text splitter. We have already imported it in line four. After that time, we are actually splitting the documents using the text splitter we have defined, text splitter dot split documents. Then we are creating a persist directory name, which is going to be DB, because we will want to check for this directory and create the Chroma DB documents if this directory doesn't exist. And if it does exist, we will want to load it from that directory. Because embeddings do use tokens and it does cost us money to be able to use it. So we want to create it one time and then not create it again and again. After we define our persist directory, then we are defining our embeddings to be OpenAI embeddings, which we have imported up here on line two. And then we just check if this directory, persist directory, doesn't exist in our working directory, 
Then we allow vector store variable to be the chroma from being our documents, embeddings being the open AI embeddings, and persist directory being the persist directory, which we have defined right here. If this directory exists, then it will we'll just simply run this line and it will load it from this directory. And then we are importing from langchain.chat models chat open AI. This is the GPT 3.5 turbo model, which is the chat GPT API. And then we are also importing some other stuff as a tuple chat prompt template, system message, AI message, and human message prompt templates. We are also importing the, from langchain.schema the AI message, human message, and system message. Then we create a chat prompt. Our system template is going to be our main chat prompt. We just say, use the following pieces of context and chat history to answer the user's questions. If you don't know the answer, just say you don't know. Don't try to make up an answer. And then I'm inserting the context and the chat history. Then we are defining the messages right here. And we are using the chat prompt template, which we have imported, and create the prompt in this line right here. Then we are defining our QA chain to be the chat vector DB chain, which we have imported from Langchain. And then dot from LLM, and then we define our LLM to be chat open AI with temperature zero, our vector store to be the vector store, which we have defined up here with Chroma DB. We either loaded it or created it. Remember, it depends on if our persist directory exists. Then we say that our QA prompt is going to be the prompt, which we are defining right here. Then we are defining a chat history to be initialized as an empty list. You can read this comment that I made right here. I'll try to explain the problem more in detail. We are creating a while loop so we can keep asking questions. That's why I'm saying the while true. If this wasn't the case, you would have to ask questions one by one. You would have to rerun this entire code. I'm saying the query, the question will be a Python's user input. So we'll be able to input our question through the terminal. And the result is going to be the result of our QA question being the query, which is our user input, and chat history being the chat history. And then I'm appending the chat history right here. I can open this up if you like to the chat history, which we have created, initialized as an empty string. Then we are printing with some stylization, the bots answer, this will print in bold. This slash 0331M starts the stylization. Then we are printing the bot so that we know that bot is answering. And then we are printing the result, answer element from the result, and then we are ending the stylization. Now let's run this again and see what's happening. We already know that we are retrieving relevant context from our vector store as demonstrated in the beginning of this video. But here if I say, hi, my name is Echo, then it will acknowledge that my name is Echo. But then when I ask, what is my name? And sometimes it fails to answer this. Let's see. She so says, I'm an AI language model and I don't have a name. So this, and let me try another thing. I'm going to say x equals 8. I'm just trying to give it something for it to remember. And I'm going to ask, what is x? Let's see if, it be, if it's going to be able to answer it correctly. But see, it says there's no mention of x8. So let's print our result without the answer, or the entire result, and see what's happening. I'm going to run this code again by commenting out our answer from our bot and we're just going to instead print the entire result instead of printing the answer element out of it. I'm going to again say hi my name is Echo and as you see our chat history is populated with Echo and it says hello Echo how can I assist you and this is the answer this is what we were printing earlier and I'm going to ask what is my name And it gets confused. It says, I'm an AI language model and I don't have a name. You can call me OpenAI. Sometimes it answers if you ask it multiple times. I'm not sure why this is happening. I just want to, oh, see? Now it answers as, yes, you introduced yourself as Echo earlier. So your name is Echo. I'm not sure why it's not answering the first time around. I just want to point out all the things that I've done here so that maybe you find a better solution for yourself. Let's exit out of this. If you didn't want to use the chat history, so you can just simply comment out this line where you're appending to the query because it's going to eat into your tokens. Let's go back to where we're only printing the answer. And as you see, we are actually entering the chat history to our system template. You might as well just erase this too if you don't want this half working memory. So then you still have to pass a chat history to your QA chain, which you're defining. But in this case, it's just going to be an empty list. So if you didn't want to use it with chat history because it's going to take some of your tokens, then you can actually initialize it to an empty string and just continue with the querying of the YouTube video. 
let's just run this one last time without the chat history. I just want to say that I will have this code available for download for my Patreon supporters, along with the requirements list. Uh, the link will be in the description. Let's just run this again. Again, we are asking, well, what it, I said, what RL? I, anyway, it answers RL stands for reinforcement learning. What methods are there for RL? It should answer with context. So we are now not using the chat history, but we are still able to do the similarity search from the Victor store and get the results from this YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to tell you both the upsides and the downsides of the chat history. Please check out our Discord channel for Echo Hive. The link will be in the description. And check out my Patreon as well. And you can subscribe to the video if you're enjoying the content. See you in the next one.